we'll just kind of look at what, 1 chapter 15, 1 Corinthians. Again, just a few things. Firstly, who he's addressing here in verse 1. Moreover, brethren. Who is he talking to? He's talking to us. He's talking to believers. He's talking to the saints. He's talking to the church. He says, moreover, brethren, I declare, brethren, I declare to you the gospel, which I preached, past tense, I preached to you, okay, so he was there before, and he preached to them the gospel, which I preached to you, which also you received, past tense, and in which you stand, present tense. Present establishment in the gospel. Paul writes again to the Roman believers. He says in chapter 16, verse 25, he says almost doxologically, he says, to him who is able to establish you according to his gospel and my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ. Again, speaking to the saints. Speaking to the saints. One of the reasons this is very near and dear to me is because I stand before you this afternoon as one, as one who was, past tense, a victim of a powerless gospel. 17 years, 17 years after a year, Sunday school, knew the hymns, knew the psalms, the spiritual psalms, could recite to you John 3.16, one problem, not saved, lost, unregenerate, no Holy Spirit, no Jesus, no relationship with God through Jesus Christ. How can that be? How can that be? Now, I know the Lord is sovereign. He has His own timing. I'm, I'm no, no blame on anyone per se. Uh, but I, I think, I think there will be people here that would agree with me with this assessment that, that there is a malady in our circles with a powerless gospel being preached. One that presents the claims of Christ almost passively. Almost as if, you know, just an optional suggestion. Oh, here you go. This is... A, B, C doctrine, you agree, yes, check the box, check the box, check the box, pray this prayer, and, and there you go, welcome to the family of God. Is, is that the gospel? We read in, in Romans chapter 1, 16, a verse that had been quoted on a number of occasions through the course of this last week, I am unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power, the power of God unto salvation to all who believe. The message itself is the power. The message, right? It's not the messenger. I mean, if, if it was up to the, the apologetic powers of persuasion of the early adherents to the church, of the, the tax collectors and fishermen that, that turned the world upside down, well, then it wouldn't, have, it wouldn't have lasted a decade, now would it? No, it was because they carried precious cargo straight from the throne of heaven, the gospel of our blessed God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it was preached not in a demonstration of man's wisdom, right? It wasn't with Eloch for Jesus Christ. No, 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 no. No, he takes a little fisherman. He sets him in front of 3,000 Jews. And this man, this man who, who denied the Lord Jesus three times, this same man in just a short span of time, is plunging the sword and saying, you crucified the Lord of glory. This man who was, I preach to you is Lord and Christ. How many... 3,000 people get saved. No, God gets all the glory. He takes the, the despised and the foolish things of this world to confound the mighty. To God be the glory. No, we, we have a powerful gospel. And yet, what do we see? We see so often, again, that it's, it's passively presented. I know um, some of you will have heard of C.H. McIntosh, one of the early brethren. And, and the word he used to describe it is a, in, a, in a fashion of, of godless fatalism kind of a lifeless dissertation. Brethren, it ought not to be. Don't, don't we have the message? We were talking about it this morning, weren't we? At, at, at this moment, at this moment, we don't have thousands, we don't have millions, we don't have billions. We, we have billions of, of the masses, the multitude, the sea of humanity that surges around us, and billions wandering on the mountains of sin and error, like sheep without a shepherd. Ours is not a message, it's the message message. Amen. Good news. Good news. And so, brethren, let, let us not be professional about this. Let us not be uh, a, a formal and, and civilized and respectable when we present the claims of Christ. Let us be filled with the Word of God. Let, by, by the yielding of ourselves to Him, let us be, be 
filled with the Spirit of God, that when we preach, it's not us that speak, but that we would speak with the oracles of God in our own assemblies, Lord. Not, not just the nations, not just the, the pagan prostitute tax collector across the street, but the, the little boys and little girls that are sitting every single week in our own services. They need Jesus too. They need Jesus too. What is our, we, we talked about the means of which this message is to be conveyed, and again, in, in spirit and in power and much assurance and with great boldness, the, 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 that's the sense that we see in the New Testament, but also the, the most important thing is the who of our message. Well, we could call it the what of our message, but it's really the who of our message. Well, who does the gospel concern? It concerns God's Son, the man Christ Jesus, holy, harmless, undefiled, and separate from sinners, the man of Calvary, the one who bore in his own body our sins on the tree, the one who, who was, was a spectacle before men and angels, and yet he spoiled principalities and powers. He brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. He hung there accursed of men, a curse of God. He died under the wrath of God, the just for the unjust. God has made His soul an offering for our sin, and not just some of them, not just the ones in the past, not just the ones now, but in the future as well, having forgiven us all transgressions. This same Jesus hung, the Prince of Glory, this one God has made Lord in Christ, crucified in weakness, and yet it says in Isaiah 53, it it pleased the Lord to bruise him, to crush him. He was bearing my sin. He was bearing your sin. Are you going to get over that? Is, is that just an introductory course to Christianity before we move on to the more practical matters of the Christian experience? This is everything. Paul says to me, the least of least saints, this grace was given to preach unto the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Gospel, if gospel equals unsearchable riches of Christ, well, I don't think that's something we're going to exhaust in a 15-minute dissertation, now is it? Not in a 10-minute in a counseling session before we move on to marriage and conflict resolution or whatever else. The gospel is the lifeblood of our assemblies, brethren. That's, I, 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 you don't have to agree with my assessment. That's the way I see it. And we need Him. We don't need systems. We don't need uh, 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 movers and shakers and professionals and strategies. Look, they had none of those in the early church, and look how things exploded. We read in Colossians chapter 1 that the gospel went out into all the world. The word of the truth of the gospel. I, I spoke of His death, His substitutionary atoning death in our place. God's judgment, His justice is satisfied because of what Christ has done in our place at Calvary. 2,000 years ago, that man bore our sin, and He's the Lamb of God that took away our sin and the sin of the whole world. But what about the resurrection? He did not stay dead. He was raised again the third day, according to the Scriptures, it says. And this man now sits at God's right hand, enthroned, exalted Prince and Savior, our Advocate. The only reason we can pray, brethren, is because of the Gospel. The only reason we can have an effective week of prayer is because God, through Jesus Christ and the message of the Gospel, has given us boldness and access and confidence because of His Son shed blood. There is a new and living way that's been made for us that we might approach a holy God. Do you really, I wonder if we need an Old Testament view of God to really understand what a privilege that is. We were aliens to the commonwealth of Israel, strangers to the covenants of promise. Angels, as has been mentioned so many times, would, would cower in His presence. They, with their wings, they cover their eyes. And we go in and out through His chambers, or we run around through the folds of His robe because we're His beloved children. Adoption. We can call Him Father. All of these come out of the Gospel, brethren. We've been making many references this week to not only being saved from the wrath of God, not, even, not only being saved from eternal judgment and from hell, but also, brethren, from not only just the consequence of sin, but the very power of sin. Now, Galatians write, uh, Paul writes to the Galatian believers, chapter 1, that he might save us from this present evil age. The Lord Jesus says I, to his disciples, I have called you out of the world. Brethren, the church and the world are two diametric op opposite spheres. 
We do not belong here. We're sojourners. We're pilgrims. We're just passing through. Brethren, we're going to, we, we have a, a hope, an inheritance undefiled that, that doesn't fade away. Do you realize there's nothing in this world, no material created thing in this world can, that can be described as, as um, everlasting and that doesn't fade away? Everything rusts, everything tarnishes, everything goes rotten in this world. Even the love of man, it, go, it grows cold. Not so with what God has done and what God has given us through Jesus Christ. This isn't everlasting. It's called the book of Revelation, the everlasting gospel. It will always be this great demonstration of the character of God. God shows who He is through the cross of Jesus Christ. This message of the cross that the world says is foolishness, but to us who believe, He is precious. This is everything. This is the pearl of great price. Jesus Christ. This is who we need. This is, this is, it's His church. He's the head. This is the fullness of Him, the, who, who the, the firstborn from the dead. And so His resurrection, we, we spoke of the resurrection, He pledges that our resurrection. And so, brethren, in, in, in conclusion, when, when we go and, and we would go back to our own assemblies and we would share the unsearchable riches of Christ, let us not just be passively suggesting these things. Brethren, let's, let's declare Let's exhort, let's urge, let's testify, let's herald, let's proclaim, let's convince, let's... Brethren, let, Paul, he says, Paul, Paul, he says, we're ambassadors, and we, we, we beg you, we urge, as if Christ were speaking through us, be reconciled to God. We're, we're not politicians, we're not diplomats, we're prophets. We are declaring not a suggestion, but an ultimatum. This world is judged, it lies under the sway of the wicked one. The, the destruction, the wrath of God is coming. The only means of escape is God's precious Son, Jesus Christ. The hope not only for the lost, but the hope for the saints. Oh, brother, Lord, just pray your blessing on our time as we pray. Help us, Lord, help us to... Pray as we ought, in Jesus' name.